Bibimbap. Bibimbap. Go to John. I have to say all these Korean words today. Bibimbap. 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 Hi, hi! It's Lauren Toyota. I'm Hot for Food, back with another awesome recipe video for you today. And you may have seen this one on my Instagram. I teased it a little bit. Today we're gonna make vegan bibimbap, oh yes, with crispy gochujang cauliflower, lots of veggies, even a vegan egg on top. Now the vegan egg, of course, is the vegan egg you saw me make for the breakfast trifle recipe, so I'm not gonna get into the how-to of that, but we are going to add it on top. We're gonna start by making the gochujang sauce and the crispy cauliflower. It's very similar to the way I make my cauliflower buffalo wings, but we're making a different sauce. And we're going to use gluten-free flour so that this whole bibimbap is gluten-free, of course, since it is rice based. You should also have your sticky rice made in advance. You're using a short grain, uh, you know, white rice, or I use Japanese uh, rice. So even though this is a Korean dish, I don't know, we're just mixing it all up, I suppose. <laughs> The batter is brown rice flour, non-dairy milk, some garlic powder or granulated garlic, and a little bit of salt and pepper. And then mix that up, and now you can dip your bite-sized cauliflower florets into that and place them on a parchment lined baking sheet. So when you dip the florets, just make sure you tap off the excess batter before placing them on the tray. And that way you'll get a nice thin coating of crispy batter. So throw these in an oven preheated to 450. You know it's gotta be hot. It is hot for food. Uh, 30 minutes flipping halfway uh, between. Now your oven may be slightly different. Just make sure it's hot and that you're watching them and that you flip them and they should be nice and golden brown. While they're baking, we'll make the gochujang sauce and then they'll be ready to baste when they come out of the oven. Into a blender, place a knob of ginger, some tamari or low sodium soy sauce, the gochujang Korean pepper paste, unsweetened rice vinegar, coconut sugar, sesame oil, granulated garlic or garlic powder, and onion powder. And now blend this until it's very smooth. All right, so traditionally with a bibimbap, you are served uh, gochujang sauce on the side. I don't actually know <laughs> if they mix it with all this type of stuff, but I did this so that it's not like overwhelmingly hot and it's a nice balance of sweet, vinegary, salty, uh, peppery, spicy, the whole thing. So that's why I've blended all of these things together and it smells amazing, you're gonna love this. So reserve half of a cup because this is gonna be served with your bowl, your bibimbap, and the rest of it will be battered on the, or will be coated on the cauliflower. So put that in a larger bowl where you can brush the sauce onto the cauliflower once it's baked. All right, so our crispy cauliflower is baked once, crispy, golden brown. We're gonna take our gochujang sauce and we are going to brush it onto the cauliflower. As opposed to dipping, because you want more of a lighter coating of this sauce, it's very intense, and this will just get it nice and even, but kind of light on the cauliflower. So it's gonna take a few minutes, but just get a silicone brush like this and brush the sauce on like this. Put it back on the parchment lined baking tray. So for this second bake, you just wanna lower the temperature of the oven to 425. Because this sauce has sugar in it, it does caramelize quite quickly. You don't want it to burn. So get these in the oven right away for another 18 to 20 minutes, just wash them. You are gonna flip them again halfway through the bake time and they should be nice and crispy um, and have some color on them. The other reason we brushed is because this sauce is thicker than when I do the like hot buffalo wing sauce, which is thinner and easier for dipping. So just some hot tips for you. The gochujang cauliflower is the main part of this dish. It's the meat component of the bibimbap. Um, there are gonna be some raw uh, julienne veggies and some bean sprouts. We're gonna do the egg, which if you wanna know how to make the tofu and egg yolk sauce, click the I card here or the link below to that recipe. It's obviously optional, or you could just make the egg yolk sauce and has served that on it as well without the tofu bits, but that's fine. Um, and then there are gonna be some cooked components of the dish, including shiitakes and a combination of napa cabbage and spinach. So we'll cook that up quickly right now, and then we will assemble our bibimbap. So in a cast iron skillet, put some vegetable oil in a hot pan, and then lay out the slices of shiitake in an even layer and brown for about three to four minutes. Don't overcrowd the mushrooms or they're gonna steam instead of brown. Then add a bit of salt and pepper to taste, flip them and brown the other side for about three minutes, and then you can remove them from the pan and set aside. Mm -hmm. 
Now while the pan's still hot, add sesame oil, minced garlic, and minced ginger to the pan. Lower the heat if it's too hot. Saute this for one to two minutes until it's fragrant and soft. Then add thinly sliced Napa cabbage and saute for about three minutes. Once it's cooked down and wilted, reduce to about half the amount, push it to one side of the pan, add a bunch of spinach, lower the heat and place the lid on the pan for three minutes. Then when you remove the lid, the spinach should be wilted and still bright green. You can combine all the greens together and remove from the pan and set aside. So in real life, everything's ready in advance, you've got it timed perfectly, and now you can assemble. Now, you could technically make all of this in advance. You could reheat up the shiitake, the cabbage, the wings, and the rice. There is construction happening outside, so there's nothing we can do about it. So what I actually did with the rice is I made it in advance, but I heated it up in the cast iron to get it crispy, a nice crispy bottom. Traditionally, bibimbap is served in a granite or a clay bowl or pot, and it comes to the table really effing hot. But I don't have the means for that, so I'm using a regular, nice sort of Asian-style big bowl here. So then when you mix the bowl up, you'll get crispy rice in there, and that's what bibimbap is, mixed rice. That's what it translates to. So let's just assemble this thing, make it look pretty, and then we'll mess it all up by mixing the rice together with all the veggies and stuff. Look at that beautiful vegan bibimbap with crispy gochujang cauliflower. Now before I eat this, gotta mess it up, gotta mix up that rice, all the sauce. Oh yeah, okay, so the crispy rice did its thing. I highly suggest doing that idea that I mentioned. Mmm! Oh my god. Now the egg's optional, but it makes it really lit. <laughs> Mmm, and you can do this little trick if you just want to serve the yolk sauce. I hollowed out a little end of a cucumber there. Put that in your bowl, and then, mmm, more eggy sauce. So in a bibimbap, the egg, of course, makes sort of the rice sticky and creamy. So you mix it like this, and this actually does the exact same thing, even though it's a vegan egg sauce. Mmm. So add as much as you like. The whole recipe, I know I made one bowl, but the whole recipe makes four bowls this size. So, very good portions. Add as much of the gochujang sauce as you like that we reserved on the side. So I watched a whole video on how you're really supposed to eat bibimbap and you're supposed to use the spoon is how you're supposed to eat it. You're supposed to pile everything onto the spoon with your chopsticks and then eat from the spoon. If it came in the clay pot, it would be really hot. It's not as hot right now. Mmm. Okay, this cauliflower, even if you just wanna make the cauliflower on its own, it's amazing. If you wanted, you could even do crispy tofu with that sauce if you don't want to use cauliflower. There's so many ways of modifying this, so do whatever you want. This is like ultimate comfort food. I mean, it's ultimate Korean comfort food for sure. Mmm, and you can never get a vegan one in a restaurant, at least not with like obviously an egg. I've had good ones that come with like rice and shiitake, very simple ones, but 
when you make it at home, you can customize it and add whatever you like, take away whatever you don't like. And I'm not like a super spicy person. This is the exact right amount of spice. Mmm. You know, I've been seeing some complaints in the comments about how my eating is taking up more time than the actual recipe portion of the video. You know, just a few comments here and there. I'm under the impression that the majority of you Hot For Foodies like this aspect of the video. But if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. I also put a poll up here in the card. So if I'm doing something you don't like, just tell me, but I may or may not listen to you. <laughs> I like this part of the video because no one else eats their food in like cooking shows on television. And this is television people, okay? I get that we're on the internet, but like it's the same thing, if not better, definitely better. And I like breaking the rules. Even if it makes my videos underperform when it comes to analytics. <laughs> I don't care, that's not why I'm here. Okay, so I just really want to keep eating this, so I am going to stop talking right now so I can finish this and wrap it up. I hope you make this vegan bibimbap and the crispy gochujang cauliflower and the egg and combine it all, get messy, get sticky, get bebopping. <laughs> I don't know if that's offensive. I hopefully, hopefully it's not. <laughs> I love the name bibimbap. I'll be back next Wednesday, of course, with a brand new video. Subscribe, comment, like, share, love, and cook, and go vegan. Bye! Love you! Bee bee